Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we're going to be doing some poly gel nails. I have not done poly gel in a really, really long time. And when I tell you that I struggled, I freaking struggled. So if you guys are familiar with poly gel, drop your guys' suggestions, recommendations, tips and tricks down below in the comment section because your girl needs help. Other than that, we're going to be doing a very simple set for today's video because I want to try to get into doing more poly gel nails for you guys. I just stuck with ombre for now which was a struggle. And then we're gonna be throwing on some butterflies, some crystals, and it's gonna be a very, very simple, easy DIY nail tutorial. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Make sure you guys tag me on any recreations you guys do because I really, really love sharing them on my Instagram. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. Now let's get right into it. are starting off with a pre-prepped practice hand and I'm just gonna go ahead and start applying the base coat which is typically what you want to do before you go in with your poly gel application I'm just going in with the McCart base you can find this on their site I did get this one specifically from one of their kits that I have uh, but you can purchase it separately if you would wish so I'm just gonna go ahead and apply a thin layer of that and we are placing that in the light I go ahead and just put it in there for about 30 seconds. It doesn't need too much curing either So now I'm gonna be using these two beautiful colors for today's set So I'm starting off with glow yellow and it is super super pretty. It's like the perfect spring slash summer yellow Absolutely love it And I'm just putting on a blob of that and I kind of just eyeball it and I prefer to use more than less because I could always remove excess versus trying to add a little bit more. You got to cure it and then go back in and it's kind of a pain in the butt. So I'd rather just start with a little bit more product than needed. And I went ahead and put a little bit of base coat on that poly gel and on my brush. So I'm going to be using that as my slip solution. Um, McCart does provide a slip solution for you whenever you purchase the kits. However, I've always struggled with that. And somebody recommended that I use the base coat as the slip solution. And oh my gosh, if you guys haven't tried it, make sure you guys do that. And it's a game changer. It's so much easier to work with. Uh, everything is less sticky in my opinion. Maybe I just didn't know how to use it, but I prefer this method, so definitely recommend it. I'm just gonna go ahead and apply it at the tip, and then once I get the thickness that I want, I'm applying a little bit more pressure right at the beginning of the color and blending it upwards. And then I'm just tucking in the sides as I typically do very, very carefully. Um, I did forget to pre-shape these tips so they're a little bit white on the sides and it irritated me the whole time. So make sure you guys file the sides before you guys get started. Now I'm applying my second bead of poly gel on my ring finger and I'm just going to keep it simple, super simple ombre. So we're going to be doing the exact same process on the rest of the fingers and I prefer to start with the tip of course. When creating my ombre it's just so much easier and then I'm going to be going in curing it and putting on the nudish pink color. So I'm doing the exact same process. I'm working with the product very carefully, slowly, and just really trying to focus on the smoothness of it and making sure that it is all nice and even. And again, just tucking in the sides. And then once I'm content, I try to pull off the excess and then I kind of just clip it off with the spatula side of the brush. And then we're going to be applying a little bit more base coat on our brush. We want to make sure that we always have a nice layer of that. Otherwise, it's going to get super, super sticky. And I had that happen to me a few times because I got a little too confident. And that's when I started struggling. So always make sure that if you start seeing it kind of tug like that, add a little bit more base coat and you will be golden. So again, just applying more pressure up top, blending it upwards very, very carefully. And I'm going to go ahead and repeat that on the rest of the nails. Then we're going to be getting into the hard part. At least it was super hard for me. Um, the pink color that we're going to be using.
Now, once you're done with that, remember to always cure that in the light. You want it to be nice, dry, and secure on that nail. And so you're able to create your ombre a little bit easier without it blending all over the place and creating a mess. So once it's dry and out of the light, I'm gonna go in with this beautiful color. It's called A Siesta. And I absolutely love it. It's super, super pretty. The perfect pinkish nude color for ombre, in my opinion, from the McCart site. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with a bead up top and then I'm gonna quickly push the product up into the cuticle area. Same process, I added a little bit of base coat on the product and on my brush. And then I just start working it downwards. Once I get to the area that I want to blend it out nicely, I just cut off the excess and basically I just apply a lot of pressure and push and pull all the way down until it is fully gone. And then you can always go back in and clean it up a little bit more. But I'm tucking in those sides around that cuticle area. And then I realized that I wiped a little bit too much. So I'm just going back in and pushing it back on the outer areas. And then just kind of trying to blend it out. I'm not even going to lie. I struggled. <laughs> this was like the hardest part. I think because it's so easy for me to do it with acrylic. I overthink it with poly gel and that's where I go wrong. I feel like once you do it, just leave it alone and quit messing with it. And that's where I kept going wrong. I kept trying to perfect it, trying to move it around, and that's not how it works. So again, a bead of that near the cuticle area, start pushing it up and on the outer areas of the cuticle. And then we're gonna be starting to kind of push and tug at the product coming downwards. And I'm trying to keep that all nice and even as much as I can. Nice, flat, even. And then again, adding a little bit of base coat, kind of pushing it onto the sides to make sure that it's fully covered. Once I get to the area where I want it to blend, I add a little bit more pressure, push and pull. You just gotta do it. And then I hope for the best. And then if I need to, of course, just to fix any little areas I go back in. But remember, don't overthink it, just do it. Now, unlike acrylic, if you need a little bit more product on there, you can always just go right in, add a little bit more. But with poly gel, like it kind of separates a little bit. And then when you go back in, it just doesn't bond as well. So what I like to do if I need to add more is I go ahead and cure it in the light and then I can go in and layer on more product. It's just easier. I'm not sure if that's like the technical way of doing it, but I would assume so because I tried adding on at one point me trying poly gel nails. I tried layering on immediately after and it did not work. So I'll go ahead and cure it and then go in with more product. And I'm not gonna lie, I was so proud of my middle finger because it was super easy to do. It blended nicely and it took me basically no time to create that ombre. Now getting on the index finger, I struggled again. So I got a little too confident, but we're working with it. We're trying it out and we're trying to expand in our nails. So I'm very, very proud that I actually got this done. Now I did go ahead and take advantage of this little LED light from Profiles Backstage. They have these little flash curing lights, so I figured I would go ahead and freeze it and then go in on the next nail. But of course, if you are using these type of little lights, always make sure you still put it in your big light to make sure that everything fully, fully cures because I don't think these are strong enough to fully cure all that thickness.
I'm pretty usual, I like to encapsulate my work, especially when doing nail art and ombre nails. So I'm going in with the McCart Poly Gel Just in Clear. And we're gonna be going in, doing the same process, adding some base coat on the product and on my brush. And then we're gonna just start focusing on that middle section, blending it upwards towards the cuticle and then downwards. And that's basically the little area that I'm trying to protect. So I'm really just focusing on that for the encapsulation process. I don't need any thickness anywhere else, so I'm just gonna be focusing on that middle section. Once I'm done with my application and it is fully cured, you wanna make sure you go ahead and put it in the light once again before you remove the tacky layer. I'm just using my Kiara Sky Lint Free Wipes and a little bit of Young Nail Swipe and really just scrubbing at the surface, making sure that I'm getting rid of every single little area that might be sticky, especially around that cuticle area because when you go in and file, if there's any little sticky areas, that dust is gonna stick on there and it just gets gross. So make sure you are fully, fully removing that tacky layer. I'm just going in with my hand file. This is the Tammy Taylor Peel and Stick file. You can find it in my Amazon storefront. And I am going in and shaping them first because it really was bothering me the entire time that I didn't pre-shape them. So here we are. And then I think I do it a little bit at the end as well. It was just bugging me a lot. So I had to go ahead and start off with that. I'm just going in on the sides, making sure that everything is nice and straight. And because these are C-curve tips, sometimes they can go downward quite a bit. So I always try to file a little bit underneath so that that is nice and straight to the natural nail. I'm going in with my e-file. This is a Kiara Sky rechargeable e-file in the unicorn color. And for my bit, I'm using the 5-in-1 bit from Not Polish. I believe this one is in fine grit. And I'm just going in around that cuticle area and then very quickly on the surface of the entire nail, vertically up and down. And I'm just focusing on that smoothness. I'm using very, very light pressure, especially when working with poly gel, you wanna be very careful because it is gel, it will file off a lot easier. So if you are heavy handed, there is a chance that you can probably remove a little bit too much. So you wanna be very, very careful with that.
and I'm just going back in with my hand file just to make sure that everything is super smooth. I get a little like super perfectionist whenever I e-file just because I feel like I can't really see exactly how well I filed. And so I like to go in with my hand file sometimes just to make sure that everything is super straight because you can really see wherever it's white, it means you filed. And if it's a little bit more on the accurate color of the product, then that means you didn't file that. So it's a really good way of checking if everything is super smooth. If you have like a whole white cast over it, that means you filed it all evenly. And we're flipping the hand around to look at the nails from the client's perspective and I'm just gonna be scoring them off, making sure that that shape is perfect. I'm going in with the buffer from Profiles Backstage and just buffing that surface, making sure that everything is nice and smooth for our nail art. So whenever I started doing this design, like I mentioned in my last video, I kind of just wing a lot of my designs, just depending on what I feel like doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean off the surface of the nail and my practice hand, but I'm basically starting off with one kind of vision, and then I kind of just work my way into the design as I go. So in preparation for this nail art, because I knew I wanted to use a transfer foil, I went ahead and laid some transfer foil gel. And this is the McCart one. It is really, really good quality. I highly recommend this one. It is one of the better ones that I've ever used. Definitely works very well to transfer the foils. So I'm just adding a thin layer of that on all of the nails because in my vision, I wanted to go ahead and add transfer foil on every single one of the nails. Uh, later on you're gonna see that I didn't but I am just gonna go ahead and prep the nails for my vision <laughs> And then of course you want to make sure you put it in the light I went ahead and put it in there for a full minute making sure that it is nice and tacky So for the most part I start off with either the middle finger or the ring finger because those are always more than likely the ones that I actually want as the accent nails and I'm starting off with a big one on the middle finger and I'm just placing it with some McCart tweezers. And then I just start rubbing it in. Uh, this gel works really, really well, but I still wanna make sure that I'm like really pressing it in, kind of scraping at it to make sure that everything fully adheres because if you get any little area that is missing a chunk, it can ruin the entire design and that's not fun to deal with. So I'm just gonna make sure and carefully remove it that way, if you see that some little areas like right here are not transferring, you can go back in and scrape or press on it a little bit more. And then voila, it worked so good. So now I'm taking another little piece and I'm kind of just eyeballing it. Again, I decided to put it on the ring finger. So I'm just going to go ahead and start really, really pressing it in, scratching at it, scraping at it, hoping for the best. And then I am adding another one up top on that same finger, just in a different position. And I feel like they're so cute. I feel like the colors really, really complement each other. And I wish I would have uh, brought a green poly gel as well so that I could have done like some crazier design. But here we are. And I think it's super, super cute. Now, once I got to this point, I was like, you know what? I feel like it's a lot of butterflies. It would still look really cute. But I wanted to add some other type of green in there versus more butterflies. So we're gonna be adding some crystals. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that and then I'm just using my gem gel from Not Polish. Around that cuticle area, I'm gonna be using neon green crystals from Profile Backstage. They are my favorite. They're super, super vibrant and super cute. They add that extra like touch that a set will need for the summertime, so I absolutely love them. And I'm just gonna go ahead around that cuticle area. I feel like this is like a classic crystal application design that you can never go wrong with. So I'm gonna do that on both fingers and then you wanna make sure you cure that in the light for a full minute.
Now before we go in the light, I am using my old 3D brush and really just kind of blending out that gel. I want it to go in nice and seamless whenever I add my top coat. So make sure you guys do this. It is one of the steps that I try to never forget because it can look really, really bulky. So I went ahead and cured that in the light. Once we are out of the light, I'm going in with Matte It From Not Polish, and we are going to be top coating a very thin layer of this over top of the surface. Now I will say that it did start lifting the transfer foil, and you'll be able to see it on the ring finger at the end. Um, so make sure you don't leave it sitting there for a very long time. Go put your matte top coat on and immediately put it into the light. Otherwise it does start lifting up that pigment. So make sure you're quick about it. You could always go in with a shiny top coat first, but I was not aware that this was gonna happen. So here we are, but I'm here to tell you. So let my mistakes not be yours. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the light for a full minute. I sometimes do too, just to be safe and make sure that everything is fully cured. But that basically concludes today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned a ton. Let me know what you guys think down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. I'm